Cisco, 4500, Supervisor 7E, and ISSU. That's what I'm talking about. Get on in the lab. Hey, folks, thanks for joining me in the lab today. Boy, you can tell by all the racket I got going on here in the background, I got a sweet sounding 4500 here running. Uh, and not only is this thing running and passing some serious packets, but it's running on the brand new Soup 7E cards on here. Well, I tell you, that really adds such a nice enhancement to this product. But what can we do to make an already great switch even better? Well, how about if we make ISSU just a little bit easier? Now, you can remember on, on a show way back when, uh, when we actually very first configured ISSU for the very first time. And our intent is to go through 50, 53 SG to the Core 53 SG without causing any packet drop. So it's a four-step process, uh, as you showed in your slides. So the first step is uh, what is called as a load version. Also, and there, after the run version, we start running what is called as a, a rollback timer, which is a 45-minute timer. So that's a, in a long enough window to give you enough opportunity to make sure minutes, yeah. all your servers are up, you can reach everywhere in the network, your bugs are fixed, and things like that. We say, you know, we are fine with the upgrade, and we proceed with the next command, which is called as the accept version. And what accept version does is basically it stops rollback. that rollback timer. Oh, man, that was the old school days right there. Uh, but look, we've decided to make it just a little bit easier and make your life a lot more enjoyable and give you some more time for fishing and beer drinking. So here's what we did. The sick minds at Cisco decided, they said, hey, what can we do here to shorten this up? Maybe make ISSU one command line long. Are you kidding me? Watch this. Let's do ISSU. Let's spell it right first, though. ISSU, we'll do change version. Uh, and then we'll talk about or type in where we're actually going to change. Where's our image that we're going to load in here? Let's put it in the boot flash. I'll name it XO. Now, I'm going to name it XO because another really nice improvement we did on here, the 4500s right now run iOS XE. How cool is that? Man, I'm telling you, we could really do a ton more of these shows on just that alone. The sky's the limit with iOS XE, man. We really have just so much more expandability. Whew, you ain't gonna believe it. So, 0x36, um, and then we'll just type in the simple word, uh, quick, to actually start the process. Now, before I start this, I wanna actually do a proof point here and show you that we've got our active module here, uh, is, is right here, this top line, uh, we have the Soup 7E uh, running in active state right now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and enter in the command. Now, this is the actual command, it's not an alias or nothing like that. One command makes this work. Here we go. Boom. Now it takes us just a couple minutes to actually do the switch over and get the old, the new image loaded on the standby module. And then the standby module will bring it in, check it, make sure everything's good. Once that's done, then it will actually put the active module in standby and then activate uh, the, the standby module into the active state. So we'll go ahead and, and watch that happen. Now after a couple minutes, one of the things that you can notice is that we already have made our switchover. Uh, this was our active, and now active became standby, as you can see here by the prompt. Uh, and the standby uh, became the active. You can actually see some of the really cool commands here that let us know, like active supervisors, initialize, that type of stuff, to show that the switchovers actually happen. Now the great thing about this is, is that you never lose client communication. ISSU's behavior hasn't changed, We've just made it simpler for all of us out there, right? One command to configure this whole thing up totally, totally makes it so much simpler to set up and less mistakes uh, that can be generated for us out in the field. Um, the, the cutover time is, is still 10 milliseconds. Uh, once, you know, we, we, we de designate the module to get the right code, it'll upload the code, check it, make everything's good. Once it brings that up, then it actually synchronizes in that cutover process, boom, 10 milliseconds. You never know what happens. You can actually do it in the middle of the day. Uh, we've done it here in the, the studio, and it's worked really good. Uh, during tapings, uh, of course, our producers had like a, like a grabber. He's reached for his glycerin pills and stuff. But hey, still worked, and it runs really great. Now, let's double check one last thing here. Actually, two last things to make sure this works. Let's do a show version uh, on the new side here. Make sure we're at the right code base, and yes, we are. Uh, this is definitely 
uh, the, uh, the the code that we wanted to load on there. Excellent. And we should also have our our new supervisor light lit up down here, uh, active, uh, and it is. Uh, what a great product, man. I tell you what, uh, if, if, I don't need any more reasons to like this switch, but if you really want to find out even more about this and even more reasons to love it, definitely make sure that you click on the link that we're putting on the bottom here. My name is Jimmy Ray Purser. Thanks again for joining us.